Hello and welcome to the big picture. The Indo-Afghan relations in the last several years have grown from strength to strength. The frequent visits of Afghanistan's President Hamid Karzai in the last several years, his second presently in last one year, has underlined the importance of India for Afghanistan. With the war-torn country now under reconstruction, India's role in it has been very significant. With the US troops now poised to withdraw by 2014, India is seen as a key player not just in rebuilding Afghanistan and its economic development, but also in ensuring the security in the region. Karzai, who has been stressing the need for Indian investments in his country, has even referred to how China is ahead of India in its investments in the region. Meanwhile, Indian government has to decide how far it will go in its interventions in Afghanistan and how it will work with the US and Pakistan to ensure that its strategic interests are protected. In the light of the latest visit of Karzai to India and following his meetings with Indian leaders, we will look at where the relationship is heading and what are the challenges in maintaining this relationship and how to deal with US and Pakistan in this context. To discuss this, I have with me today Major General Ashok Mehta, a security analyst, Professor Gulshan Sachdeva of the School of International Studies, JNU, Anand Sahai, Coordinating Editor, Asian Age. Welcome to all of you. Uh, Major General Mehta, this uh, visit of Karzai, and you know today they had a meeting and they had a joint press conference and all the prime, the prime minister of India and uh, Mr. Karzai. Where are, where are we heading now? Has, is this a very crucial uh, meeting which we uh, this visit of Karzai, or is it just a continuation of the several visits that he has been making to India? You know, candidly speaking, there is nothing extraordinary about this visit. Mm. It is to use your phraseology a continuation of the visits and an extension of the strategic partnership agreement that was signed between India and Afghanistan. And we shouldn't miss the point that this partnership agreement was the first ever that Afghanistan signed with any other country. Right. The second point that can be made... So to that extent it is significant. Yeah, so it is to follow up on that because... Last year on 4th October, he was here and he signed this, uh, this uh, partnership agreement. In this partnership agreement, if you go through the clauses, there was nothing new. We put down, codified what we were doing on paper. Right. The only additional thing that appeared from the security and political point of view was this element of that both countries will discuss as mutually agreed to train, equip the Afghan National Security Forces. Right. Train, which we were already doing, equip, we were not doing. So that was the new element that was brought into the agreement. So here we are, Mr. Karzai is here again telling you, look you guys, you are falling behind. Uh, come, 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 come for the investment like the Chinese are doing, and Afghanistan is very secure. Well, that's not the case. What, regardless of what uh, Mr. Karzai will say, on a daily basis there are attacks. He himself, right he across. himself, he himself has admitted that every day ten to twelve people get killed. Yeah, and so, you know, it's a very so, insecure so, region. So, you know, one. Uh, let me make a last point that there was this investment meet international investment meet earlier this year, a couple of months ago, which was meant to be held in Kabul. Right. Now, nobody went to Kabul because they said, we, do, we, we don't find it safe. So they had the meeting here. Indeed. And the, the UN group, <coughs> I've just come from uh, New York, uh, and we were being briefed on Afghanistan uh, by the United Nations Department of Peacekeeping. And one of the things they said that a UNSC fact-finding mission was meant to go to Kabul in the last couple of months. That visit didn't take place because of insecurity, reasons of insecurity. So I believe that security is an underlying factor. Uh, whether you talk about the, the elections, whether you talk about transition, whether you talk about investment, business, 
the the doubt is on the capacity of the afghan national security forces to be able to hold the ground and operate independently once the isaf moves out absolutely period uh, professor gulshan fazdeva the uh, uh, the question is that you know there, there seems to be a lot of focus in this visit at least on the economic partnership he went to bombay he you know appealed to the indian investors how far are the indian investors willing to uh, we have about 2 billion dollars mm -hmm. investments now at this point of time mm -hmm. but how far are the indian investors willing to invest in afghanistan at this point of time well i think as mentioned by janu mehta security has been concern in afghanistan it's going to be concern in the next 5 to 10 years despite that i think certain investments have taken place in 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 taken place in afghanistan uh this 2 billion investment what you have mentioned that's basically governmental developmental assistance right. what he was talking in bombay was basically private, private investment. investment private or large corporate investment from the public sector private sector no as far as the paper i mean major investment has been kind of agreed by india in the mining sector right and there are possibilities that there are reports that it some other investments are in pipeline particularly the copper mines right. as well in the gold mine and there are also reports that india might be actually thinking of building a railway line from hajigarh where all the investments are going to take place uh, up to chaba port so there are many things which are happening so in that sense this is going to be uncertain reason but at the same time if the profits are high and uh, you can see certain investments from uh, you know american companies from other companies from the gulf they are taking place uh, so in that sense yes i mean uh, it's a risky reason but at the same time investments can take place and i think india can play important role particularly both china and india this is what i think he was looking uh, particularly on india okay we are we are now joined in by mr chinmay gare khan a distinguished former ambassador and also indian ambassador to the un uh, welcome mr gare khan i i would like to come to you uh, just before you came in we were discuss we were discussing about the importance of this karzai's present visit to india and what major general mehta also was talking about is the is the security angle though it's underplayed to agree, to some extent by in, in during this visit also the fact that the security of that region is the most key factor cannot be undermined right right i agree here so in 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 the indian and uh, in, the, in the the present context how far is india playing a major role as far as the security aspect of that region is concerned and you have i i i was going just going through a couple of yeah, article we were talking of creating a neutral zone you know afghanistan becoming a neutral zone is that a real is can that become a reality at all well there are several questions that you have asked at the same time uh but i agree if general mehta has said this that the situation in the country is still not stable right and i think it is going to remain unstable for some time and it might become even more unstable after 2014 right. or around 2014 and after 2014 so india has to be rather careful uh even in increasing its investments i would say in afghanistan because the attraction of uh, making quick profits or huge return at some time in future is very good and probably is you know too good to resist but it would be prudent uh, it, you know one doesn't have to wait for too long you know the situation will become clearer in the months ahead uh, yes i have been writing and speaking for last many years about a, a so called neutral afghanistan i don't use the word neutral anymore because apparently mr karzai doesn't like the word neutral okay. uh, so but what but the essence of neutrality is that uh, the afghanistan and all its neighbors immediate and proximate neighbors should undertake not to interfere in afghanistan's internal affairs and similarly afghan government whichever may be the regime should resist the temptation of inviting foreigners uh, to come into its own internal quarrels squabbles between afghan factions can they help it sorry can they can it be helped can they help not allowing or you know this interference which you're talking about you see it's something one, which, which they have been inviting or it is happening on its own no no they have been inviting also hmm. uh, and uh, sometimes it happens on its own 
Uh, but the, the sense is that every country, including Pakistan, says that it is interested in a stable Afghanistan. Right. Now, to ensure stability of the Afghanistan, foreigners must stop interfering because most, if not all, of Afghanistan troubles are due to foreign interference. So, if all the countries of the region agree that this is a good thing, then they must undertake in a declaration or a commitment or a UN resolution or whatever to stop interfering. At the same time, mere declaration is not enough. It, absolutely. So, for to, what I have been suggesting is that there should be some mechanism which can only be authorized by the United Nations to monitor this commitment, mutual commitment by the neighbors of Afghanistan. Now, it, it may not be foolproof. You will need observers and so on. The details will have to be worked out. But uh, there is no other better alternative. Yeah, I have not heard of any better idea how to deal with Afghanistan's instability. Uh, Anand, coming to you. The recent uh, re-election of Obama as the President of United States, how, how significant is it in, in, in the context of Afghanistan and what is planned for the future and how India will deal with U.S. and Pakistan as far as Afghanistan is concerned? Uh, Girish, before we get into that, I'd like to say that <coughs> you've asked a very, very broad question and elicited, you know, similarly extremely broad responses. Security is bad. The, danger, the region is virtually doomed on account of that. And that's the upshot of what people are saying. <coughs> and what Mr. Gary Khan has been uh, saying for some time about, about neutral zone, which, you know, the, 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 the semantics of it he might like to modify, <coughs> you know, in view of the, uh, uh, the feelings in Afghanistan. But, but generally speaking, it's, a, it's an extremely negative picture that is being portrayed. I beg to differ with all of these things and in fact some of the basic uh, postulates you know underlying <coughs> these observations and the reason for that is first of all today it is not business as usual in afghanistan let us underline that first when karzai came here last year october signed the strategic partnership agreement it wasn't merely asking one more time can we have some more aid can we have some training etc cetera, etc cetera. you know and, and that kind of situation karzai came here and we agreed to being the first country to be drafted into the whole new paradigm, which was right. to emerge after the withdrawal of the U.S. combat troops only, right. right? And because that signified, from the Indian end, a long-term commitment to Afghanistan. Let's not lose sight of that. The Americans have not made a long-term commitment. They pulled out. Right. Manmohan Singh was in America, it was in New York, I think, a year ago, year and a half ago, where he told these guys, hmm. for heaven's sake, last the course, they will pull out their troops, they will retain some residual stuff, they will retain some of the air bases for a variety of other reasons, right? But this signifies our commitment to stay on when others are running away for reasons which are important to them. I'm not uh, saying that those reasons are unimportant, but they are going away. With a great deal of difficulty, some kind of money has been agreed upon by Western countries at Chicago and so on, 10 more years. And about that also, people are very anxious about you know, opening their purse strings, et cetera. You know, but anyway, that debate will carry on. But the fundamental thing is the combating, combatant troops are departing. You have been invited to come and step up your act. I think India does need to raise its game in Afghanistan. By that, I do not mean that we should put our troops in there. I'm not sure that the Afghans would actually welcome that. They want our... At least uh, in, in the latest interview which Karzai has given, he has said, no, no, he I, has I, very, said very clearly, no, we don't want they, troops. They don't want one set of foreign troops to go and another set of foreign troops to Absolutely. come in. They would like your... Today, the, the, the level of army and the police, they are ill-trained, especially the police. The army is somewhat better trimmed, but terribly equipped. Terrible equipment, you know. They were getting reject stuff from everywhere. So as, as, as Major General Mehta was saying, the new thing is that we have to equip them also, not just train them. No, no, that goes without saying. All I'm trying to urge you is that you have to raise your game in Afghanistan politically, right? It is not any use saying mm. the security is bad, therefore how can our chaps rush in with investment? The Chinese have rushed in, they have preceded you there. And if you are not in a position to do so, if your private sector is unable to do so, they want quick profits, preferably risk-free, 
if possible. That's not, that going, not, to happen. not going to happen. And, and mind you, and it's a very important consideration that we must keep in mind, anybody analyzing Afghanistan should keep in mind, in the last five years, there's been perhaps one incident, you know, which the British troops fought in Helmand, where they agreed, the Taliban, they pushed in about 15,000, you know, roughly one division worth of troops. They took heavy losses. They made the tactical mistake. This was explained to me by General Alexander, who was later the British uh, <coughs> chief and then ISAF chief. He said the mistake they made was they fought very well, the Afghans. Our boys fought very well too. But the Afghans, uh, the Taliban made the mistake of after suffering great casualty, you kept on, instead of, you know, uh, salvaging what you can, they pushed more troops and more troops and they all lost their lives. Okay. Uh, yes, no, you, you no, were. Uh, Girish, Girish, just one second. The point, basic point is, apart from I explosive devices, you take 95% or 98% of all Taliban actions in any part, including in the Helmand region, including in southern eastern Afghanistan. Le leave the north aside for a minute, right? Yeah. Including in these places, there have hardly been any engagements. And if you are telling me that on the basis of that, on the basis of that alone, the security situation is so deplorable that we cannot move ahead no. politically. I think that will okay, be okay, overstating I, the case. I, yeah, I, quickly. No, no, you're contradicting yourself. No, I never contradicted no, no, myself. No, no, no. You said that... I was contradicting police, you, not myself. No, no, no. no. There, there is absolutely no cause for optimism. And if that was the case... I did not say so. I said there's a cause for realism. No, no, let, no. Let us not overstate the disaster scenario. I think, scenario. I think, your cause I think for Mr. Garekan also needs to also. The, 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 your cause for optimism... No, optimism is the wrong use. use. My, 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 my you, cause you for said greater realism. You disagree with everybody, and having said you disagree with everybody, you say the security... No, I did, not say, I did not say I disagree with everybody. Sir, you, that's well, anyway, 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 what I said was... Now, the, the, no, yeah, so, so what is the point you are You not paraphrase to me what I have okay. just said. No, no, no. I'm I'm not, one minute. I'm let him finish. To you. I am no, reminding no, you. No, no, no. What is the point? The, the security situation is certainly very bad. Now, and if it wasn't bad, the security situation is certainly very bad. And if it wasn't bad, the Americans would not be here, coming here last week and asking us to do more in terms of training and equipment. Okay. Now, Mr. Garikan, sir, Mr. Uh, you see the. It's not just the military. It's the security is not just, we are not just talking the military and the police. Both of them are not in good shape. I, I'm, I'm sorry to say that I, you know, I will not agree with no, you I there. Agree, I agree with that you. They are I not in that good myself. shape. Yes. But the thing is that you see, what is the, <coughs> what is the strategy of the Americans and others? And uh, Indians, India also, because India endorsed the American line. Right. Uh, when Mr. Manmohan Singh went there, well, I don't know whenever he went there, Reconciliation and integration. Reconciliation is political track, right. political reconciliation. Integration is the integration of the insurgents into Afghan national forces. Either of these track is not doing well. Reconciliation talks have failed. They have come to a stop. Integration, there has hardly been any integration. But the whatever number of people are integrating is more than offset by desertions from the Afghan armed forces. Okay. And there is also the problem of the, uh, the green on blue attacks. The so-called, you know, the Afghans themselves are firing on, uh, on, the, on the NATO and um, uh, British and other yes, troops. So this, no. So the thing is that when the Americans withdraw and when there is a presidential election in 2014, there is going to be political instability. Right. And this is the thing to be most worried about. Not just so, the Taliban so, so, threat, so, so, but so the political So, Mr. Garikan, what you're trying to say is that India has to be extremely cautious and whatever investment they have to go, they have to be extremely cautious before they step in and, or rather wait till 2014 to see what and is going India to happen. India has been cautious. Okay. I'm not saying India has okay, been cautious. Okay, we, we, need to, we need to go into a short break now. Uh, we will come back soon and continue this discussion. Please keep watching. We'll be back very soon. Welcome back. We are discussing the Indo-Afghan relations in the context of the visit of Afghanistan President Hamid Karzai to India and asking the question, how far can India go? 
Uh, yes, Gulshan, uh, you, were, you wanted to say something. You wanted uh, to add to that. Well, I mean, I think in this broad picture, whatever I think we, uh, we are discussing, so broadly, uh, in the next few years, Afghanistan is going to face three major challenges. Right. One is obviously security. Second is economic. And third is political. Right. And I think in all three areas, India can play a very important role. In security, I think certain amount of things which are already happening, some more things may happen. No, you, I think you should react to what Anand said. Anand says that, you know, this, this whole scare which has been created that, you know, that the, the whole region is uh, volatile and things like that. He says... No, I think I broadly agree with him because what is happening in Afghanistan, certain areas, certainly situation is very bad. Yes. But in other areas, uh, I think uh, things are not that bad. I mean, you know, there is a broad insecurity, but within those areas, I mean, if you talking about in the northern part and many other areas, investment is taking so, place, you, business so is more you, or less I, as I, usual. So are you trying to say that in, if Indian investment has to go there, they have to be choosy about where they're going to invest and, you know, this, this Yes, of course. I mean, they're already that, that, choosy. That can be oh, done. They're already choosy. Say, Hajigak region is not volatile at all. Okay. And even where the Chinese investment is there, that is also not a volatile region. Okay. So already companies and others, I mean, when you're making large investment decisions, say, for example, if you're investing in Hajigak region, from there, and particularly if you're thinking of bringing it via Chabar port and other, you know, then these are the areas, things which are workable. Okay. Even when you have certain areas under Taliban, particularly in the south, still okay. I think things can be worked okay. out. Okay. No, but you, Mr. No, Mr. But you, see, you have to look Gar at the security uh, situation post-2014. People don't invest on exactly the security to that. situation today. <coughs> you have to look at what will be obtained coming, after 2014. I am coming to the 2014 situation, Mr. Gare Khan. No. 2014. Already there seems to be a, a, a certain, um, you know, disquiet about the Americans in Afghanistan. If you read the interview of Mr. Hamid Kala, the latest one he, he gave to some of the Indian channels in the last couple of days, he is not too happy with the way the U.S. has been, uh, the U.S. troops especially have been functioning, the NATO troops have been functioning in, the, in those regions. So, you know, what, what, is the, what is the kind of relations which you, which you uh, envisage between U.S. and U.S. and Afghanistan in the coming, you know, before 2014? And also, how much should India and India deal with the U.S. as far as this is concerned. See, Mr. Karzai is a very astute person. He's a very clever politician. Mm. And he, 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 his remarks are geared to the audience that is addressing. The domestic audience. Domestic and foreign, wherever, wherever for which country he visits, right. he tailors his remarks to, to that particular audience. So, Mr. Karzai can be quoted saying different things at different times, okay. contradicting himself at different times. So, but he's the president, so we have to take seriously whatever he whatever says. He says. Uh, the Americans, the Afghans need the Americans. If they, in fact, if the Afghans, if Mr. Karzai would have it, he would keep on blaming the Americans, but also saying, you please stay on, also. So, this, but, you know, the, the Chinese uh, investment, Chinese have not taken one single ton out of it. The Americans are protecting the, that area where the Chinese are going to have, have yeah. are going to invest. Not one single ton has been mined. They are they have they have got the Contract. concession to mine, but they have not exploited it at all because they are also waiting for proper security arrangement. Okay. So there is no such thing as completely safe place anywhere in Afghanistan. Yeah, uh, Anand, Mr. Mr. Gare Khan in one of his uh, articles mentions that, you know, there has to be this trilateral di dialogue between India, India, U.S. and Pakistan. It has begun already. It it is, it has it's begun. a good idea, I think. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So you think, you think that, will, that, will make, <coughs> that, that will have any positive benefit, benefits? See, Girish, that is just one among, you know, many balls in the air. I think it's an important thing to work for because if... But how is, the, how is Pakistan going to react? Uh, in, in fact, another suggestion is that India and Pakistan should have... The, should have dialogue on Afghanistan. It's a wonderful how, how viable is it? That also I think is a great idea, except that I don't see that idea going very far on account of what's happening inside Pakistan and the capability of the Pakistan state, uh, you know, and, you know, uh, the calculations of its military even today to be helpful in a, in a to, uh, to help create an environment in which the Indians will have a certain degree of leverage that that is they they continue not to want that situation to prevail mm -hmm. but i i want to yeah. come back quickly quickly, quickly. Uh, yeah, very, very quickly. i agree with mr gare khan that the security situation is not going to be determined only by the military and the army and the police 
nor by the foreign forces, etc., nor by the equipment and training, though all of these things are important. I am not for a minute trying to say that Afghanistan is a walk in the park. It's not. It's an unusual situation. Right. But we have seen unusual situation of that type elsewhere as well, including in many parts of this very country. What I'm saying is, because the political uncertainties are likely to reveal themselves after this next election in 2014, but just remember one thing, the Afghan society, and if you like the very wobbly thing called the Afghan state, today is quite separate from what it was eight years ago, okay. ten years ago. It is not okay. a same country. Okay. And I, I completely, in my mind, I do not foresee arms and weapons coming out, different old Afghan factions pulling out guns no, and, that is and going at each other. Yeah. That situation I do uh, not Arun, foresee. Your, your, your expectation or hopes are very you know, welcoming. No, not hope. I, I'm saying but but how would this come Mehta. out as they yeah. did once this, before? Yeah. If you want to react to him, you can react. No, what you see, the question is what Mr. Gare Khan says, and he said, if those three pillars, the political, that is reconciliation, the security, which is going nowhere, and the economic, are not in place, so there is no call no, for quick, Quickly, I want, so a what, quick, what? I want a quick reaction to this. If India and Pakistan sitting together on a dialogue, on Afghanistan, how viable? Oh, that's it? brilliant idea. We've no, been saying this. It's an idea, idea, but how far it will no, it be successful? For this to happen, the Americans have to push the Pakistanis. But the relations between the Americans and the Pakistanis are so <laughs> bad today. They are only reviving the relations just now. Yes, sir. No, Last I, word, sir. You see, the, this I have written myself about India and Pakistan discussing Afghanistan. Right. This has been suggested to Pakistan a number of times. But, both, but, but both the distrust on, between the two? Both at the track two level and officially. Right. But parties are not agreeing to that. Right. They are saying that let us first remove the distrust between our two, ourselves. Exactly. Uh, only then Before we, we can, go to Afghanistan. But I don't agree with Pakistan. But you cannot force Pakistan to talk to us about Afghanistan. So that is for the moment a non-starter. A non-starter. Non uh, and, uh, and so Gulshan... No, I think... What <coughs> uh, on, uh, in, Positive developments happening between India and Pakistan. You and Anand, mm. both of you are on the same track saying that you know there are the more positive things happening there than negative things. Whereas those no, two No, I'm not saying positive more happening. I'm being, I'm being no. a little more cautious. It's, well, what it's I'm saying, possible for positive things to happen. Well, and at the same time, even those positive things to happen, I think India-Pakistan relations have to improve. Because if, say, for example, in the long term, you're looking about sustainability of the Afghanistan economy, ultimately it has to link with the Indian economy because they, they, all the major exports have to come to India. And that cannot come unless there are relationship, the relationship improves between India and Pakistan. And already you have Afghanistan-Pakistan trade and transit agreement right. in which they have not allowed Indian goods to go back to uh, Afghanistan. So these things, I mean, these things will not happen unless there is improvement between India and Pakistan. And this is really crucial for Afghanistan as well as even our larger picture. If we want to really link okay. India and Central Asia. 25 seconds. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. <laughs> is any process of reconciliation or a post-2014, the Taliban are most likely to have a share in the government. Only then there can be a so genuine the, the, the reconciliation. the reconciliation with Taliban has to take place between now and 2014 uh, if anything I, I, I I'm not so sure that. of that. that they have no, no, as any, as reconciliation. Party any reconciliation. Any reconciliation. No, as a okay. party, I'm not so sure. Okay, okay. No, no. We have come to the end of the uh, discussion, but it's very evident that Afghanistan is a volatile region. A lot of things are happening there. A lot of things will happen there. And we need to keep, keep having a close watch on it. But as uh, Anand and Gulshan says, there are something positive which can happen. Let's hope and see that more positive things will happen. Thank you very much. Thanks to all my guests, Mr. Chinmay Gare Khan, Major General Ashok Mehta, Gulshan Sachdeva and Anand Sahai. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue on the big picture same time tomorrow.